The Treaty of Waitangi, New Zealand's founding document, was first signed on the 6th of February 1840. Much debate surrounds its meaning and interpretation. At the beginning of the 19th century, there is frequent contact between Māori and foreign whalers, sealers, traders and missionaries. Natural resources such as trees for shipbuilding are traded. Minor disagreements and conflict occur. Small groups of Europeans are the guests of the 100,000 plus Māori population. Early contact is conducted largely on the Māori's terms. By 1830, over a thousand European ships are visiting New Zealand each year. Lawlessness prevails. Sailors, escaped convicts and adventurers from the colony of New South Wales are difficult to control. There was trade taking place, there were people arriving, there was whaling and sealing. And so the British didn't really feel the need for anything in particular. In a sense they were forced into it by concerns raised by Māori chiefs about the behaviour of principally British subjects in Aotearoa and the, the need for some sort of control and discipline. Māori and British concerns grow that the French want to annex New Zealand. Thirteen Māori northern chiefs petition King William IV for protection. The Crown promises protection. During the 1830s, British missionaries and humanitarians pressure the Crown to save the Māori from the same devastating effects that European colonisation and imperialism has had upon the indigenous cultures in Africa, Australia and the Pacific. There was a movement within Britain to acknowledge and to regret the very harmful effects that, uh, that British occupation, British colonial authority had had in some other countries. They could see the results in Australia, for example, the condition of Aboriginal people around um, settlements like Port Jackson, Sydney, were very distressing. Missionaries in New Zealand also discouraged land sales by purchasing it and acting as trustees to local tribes. James Busby is appointed first official British resident to New Zealand. He's given little support to enforce his authority. The Māori have an economic need for nationhood. With Māori trading, particularly with New South Wales, they had ships, they were trading quite extensively back and forth. But the problem was Aotearoa New Zealand as a nation did not exist. And under British maritime law of the day, in order to trade, a ship needed to have Firstly, a flag, to sail under a flag, and secondly, to have a ship's register. With no official authorisation, James Busby creates the Declaration of Independence of New Zealand. Written in Māori, it is signed by 34 northern chiefs. More chiefs from further south sign over the next four years. The chiefs see this as an expression of Māori nationhood. The Māori interpret this as a crown guarantee of independence. Busby and other British see it as a step toward making New Zealand a British possession. Declaration is officially acknowledged by the King in 1836.